Good morning. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. This is your early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nossbaum here with some words of wisdom to start your day off well. And uh, the heat keeps kicking on. I think it's in the 20s out there. Burr. <laughs> so I have a coffee group that I attend via Zoom after we're done on Tuesdays. And uh, one of them is already sending a message to the host saying, how are the roads? I'm concerned they're icy. So quite possible, quite possible. 20 degrees. Burr. So today I got the idea that it felt like it was time for a Tosha Silver in flux. Good morning to those of you who are popping on. Names aren't rolling. I just see my little counter going up. So um, we have outrageous openness, letting the divine take the lead. And uh, we'll see um, what y'all think of this, this particular chapter. To me, it's relevant um, in that it gives a perspective. And um, yesterday when Joniel again, speak of the devil, there she is. Good morning, Joniel. That is always a weird saying, speak of the devil, whatever. Anyway, good morning, Joniel. <laughs> um, we were working yesterday on our new, newest iteration, um, and hoping to have that out today. One section, um, again, the, the dealing with Thanksgiving and family and differing beliefs, etc idea. So this is a variation. Our reading today is a variation of differing beliefs and how as something changes, it can influence our beliefs, our perspective, and give us a whole new way of looking at things. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for today is let's see how this chapter can influence us having a whole new way of looking at things. So let's start with the breath as always. In through the nose, out through the mouth. I think it's interesting. Joniel's name is the only one that's popping up, yet there are four of you on here. In through the nose, out through the mouth, and Abigail pops up. Good morning, Abigail. In through the nose, out through the mouth. If the rest of you want to say hi, then my guess is your name will roll, but just weird, just in interesting that that's what it's doing. And there's Mel. Good morning, Mel. Glad you're here. In through the nose, out through the mouth. So I'm noticing in myself a perspective shift. Usually I especially early on in this process. I mean, I've been doing early morning intuitive guidance for 10 years-ish. Um, would get bent when the equipment wasn't working, when I it wasn't doing what it typically did. And now I'm like, meh, whatever. Five of you on here, I've greeted the three of you who have rolled through. The other two of you know that I'm aware you're here. Good enough. Good enough. I kind of like that. The good enough life a good enough life. I mean, maybe we need t-shirts for that also. Anywho, outrageous openness, letting the divine take the lead, Tosha Silver. And again, keep in mind that what I'm hoping for out of this particular chapter, which is chapter five, for those of you who have the book and want to um, read along with me, <clears throat> page 61 in my book, a perspective shift. What kind of perspective shift would this offer you? If you were in this circumstance, which there but for the grace of God, right? Good morning, Linda. Glad you're here. Welcome. Where? What would your perspective shift be? It's interesting reading about this woman Paula's perspective shift, but what would your perspective shift likely be? And not that we can know for sure because we're projecting ourselves into a circumstance that for most of us, <laughs> lived yet. <laughs> Poor wireless connection. So today mine is going to be dicey. Good morning, Angie. Glad you're here. Yes, welcome to all the practical rebels. Hello, Cindy. Now names are starting to roll. So we, we, we shall see. We are all good enough. Good enough. You're getting that temporarily blocked thing again. Not a clue. Not a clue. So I'm not sure if you can see me or hear me, but I'm, uh, I can see your name and I can see what you're writing. So we're good on that front. 
<sighs> Technology. Good morning, Mary. Glad you're here. Welcome. The chapter is entitled Giving It All Up, and this particular section is called The Death Advisor. And as I've said a bazillion times, when we have two quotes at the beginning, it's always good stuff. <clears throat> so the first quote is by Mahatma Gandhi. When you make yourself into zero, your power becomes invincible. And the other one is by Carlos Castaneda. Let death be your advisor. Let death be your advisor. So here's the story. I once heard this story about a friend's sister. A 40-ish woman named Paula lived in Baltimore as a paralegal. Busy with relationships, work, family, typical stuff. She was not in the least spiritually inclined. Then came the shocker. Though she had never had more than a cold, Paula was suddenly diagnosed with a rapidly advancing rare form of lymphoma and given three months to live. Her world imploded. Understandable, right? Practical by nature, she immediately threw her energy into organizing her affairs, handling her immediate departure like one more of the efficient to-do lists that she'd spent her life making. To her amazement, she was not afraid. Paula paid off her debts, released everything unnecessary, and prepared to die. This world became a diaphanous dream. She ceased having useless conversations. Why bother? Good morning, CJ. Glad you are here. Welcome. She started telling everyone the truth. She stopped doing anything she didn't want, following her inner clock completely. As she realized this world would go on quite well without her, a peaceful detachment embraced her like a warm bath. Then a new twist. In the third month, the cancer spontaneously left. To the doctor's confusion, all symptoms vanished as fast as they had come. But Paula's calm equanimity remained. To me, that is kind of like the reverse of when the student is ready, the teacher appears. <laughs> when the student has learned, the teacher can disappear. <laughs> Even more surprising, she had acquired the power to manifest and heal almost anything. If she thought of a certain amount of money, it came almost effortlessly. If she imagined an apple, a stranger pulled one from a bag. People with illnesses began to call for her help. This talent came of its own volition since Paula needed and wanted nothing, having already bid adieu to this world. With no grasping ego, most of her thoughts materialized in a flash. The same divinity she had once now she had once dismissed now flowed unimpeded from her being. Paula said, maybe when you no longer need anything, you can have everything. And when you stop trying to make things happen, anything can. All I know is the me that used to be is gone. I'm out of the way. So let's think about that. What would it be like to live a life where the, the ego-driven you takes the back seat, goes to the back of the bus, we've talked about this before, and the heart and soul driven you is driving the bus. What might that life be like? I love this idea with no grasping ego. Imagine that. Imagine that. <clears throat> so people around you could be doing and saying their own ego driven things, but rather than you getting snagged by that, you're just merely the observer because you've moved beyond that. You're no longer driven by that. So I'm going to make stuff up here just for shits and giggles. Someone claims an idea that you actually came up with. You're not going to care. Let them claim it. If that feeds their ego, more power to them. Someone is uninterested in something that you have interested in. Let them. No big deal. Joniel talks a lot about the let them idea. I think that's a Mel Robbins thing. Um, but wherever someone's at, they're at. And wherever you're at, you're at. And if where you're at is that not driven by ego, good morning, Nancy, glad you're here, that not driven by ego, but driven by heart and soul piece of you, 
imagine what life is like. So when someone is controlling, rather than either succumbing to their control or doing battle with their control, you merely allow them to be where they're at. And I'll suggest that their controllingness is likely to attenuate some because you're not poking it. You're not pushing against it, right? So materialized in a flash. Think about that. Oh, I think I had a little lapse there again. But most of her thoughts materialized in a flash. Think about that. What if your thoughts actually became things immediately? Woof. Woof, woof. That's quite something. Interesting. Oh, I see a whole bunch of things rolling. So it probably was frozen for a little bit there. and Now it's catching up with itself. <laughs> so, but I loved her comment. Maybe when you no longer need anything and need being a perception oftentimes, you can have everything. And when you stop trying to make things happen, anything can. <clears throat> so think about that for Thanksgiving. Rather than being a maniac, how many of those little videos have you been seeing about the woman going insane with the cleaning and the cooking and the baking and all that stuff pre-holiday? And then we know the outcome of that, right? You're so exhausted that you really don't enjoy the holiday. So what if the total house doesn't get cleaned? What if every single dish that somebody wants doesn't get made? What if you're just there. You, you are your gift to your family for Thanksgiving. How about that? How about that? How about if it's the cran canned cranberries instead of you slaving? Good morning, Bobby. Glad you're here. Welcome. What if you allow everybody to be where they're at for Thanksgiving? You don't feel like you have to monitor how it's going and shut up great, great uncle Charlie because he's ranting and raving about sports or politics or the state of the world or whatever, <clears throat> let him rant. If someone wants to hang out with him and rant along with him or power to him, you do another things. What would you most enjoy? Would you most enjoy hanging out with grandkids? I don't have any of those yet. I have a grand dog. Two, two, well, you got one grand dog, one grand cat. Yeah. So hanging out with them, would you prefer to go for a nice walk after dinner instead of diving right into all the dishes? Allowing. What would I like in this moment? What would, what would suit me best? What would my guests like? What would suit them best? And different people maybe being at different places. So maybe there's some who play a game. Maybe there's some who go for a walk. Maybe there's some who sit and watch a football game. Allowing people to be where they're at. <clears throat> the flow, can you feel the energy of that flow? Much less tense, much less fraught with potential fit pitfalls. I'll say that five times real fast. Fraught, fraught with potential pitfalls. <laughs> so, even that, enjoying things, having a little fun with stuff, what could be really pleasant? Um, but I like this idea of considering, think about that, the life altering things that happen to people. And usually they're of a nature that we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, aren't happy about. Someone passes away. We get a terminal diagnosis. Uh, our house burns down. We have a car accident, all that stuff. But there's also positive ones. I, mean, I don't know why they popped into my head, but think about the Clampets. All of a sudden, you got a whole lot of money. We saw, watching the show, the good, bad, and indifferent that comes out of that. But life circumstances change. And maybe imagining, good morning, Diane, glad you're here. Maybe imagining some of those circumstances, like I look at this chapter. So she was diagnosed with a rapid spreading form of lymphoma. Told you have three months, get your your affairs in order, etc. How would I manage that if that were my life experience? What would I want to do? What would be most important? Certainly wouldn't be a lot of the stuff that I do, right? That stuff 
then pales in comparison to the things that have now taken on some urgency because I'm not going to be walking the earth plane that much longer, right? So what if, what if we took the stance that those things that matter the most, even though we don't have some dread diagnosis hanging over our head like a black cloud, what if we prioritize those anyway? What if we make that the most important thing? What if instead of worrying about my house being clean for Thanksgiving, I think about what would I like to have, have happen as we're all sitting around that table? What could be fun? What could be enjoyable? Something like that. So I could, I could see sitting at the Thanksgiving table and saying, hey, let's talk about what was our best memory from this year. What was the best thing that happened this year? And see what people come up with. Some of them are probably going to have to work a little bit to remember something. Doesn't that speak volumes? Doesn't that speak volumes? So what would we most like to do? What's most important to us? Like, so as I'm answering that question for myself, what's most important to me at this point in my life and given the things that are going on is planning for where am I going to be living? I want a really nice place where I'm living. I would love an intentional community. I would love a close-knit group of people in their small houses, not tiny houses, small houses, you know, 600, 800, 1,000 square feet. Cluster together, spending time together, having private time in their own little homes, etc. That's what I'd love. So, redoubling my efforts to move in that direction. What about for you? What would you love? If you knew you only had a short time left on earth, what would be most important to you? What would you most like to do? What would, how would you most like to be? What might you let go of because it no longer has value given those circumstances? Mess around with the idea. Have some conversations with people about the idea. Are there going to be the people that go, oh, you're being morbid, blah, blah, blah. To me, death and dying is really a natural part of the process. We come in, we go out. We come in, we go out. We come in, we go out. It's just the nature of the beast. Others view it differently, which I honor that others view it differently. But again, I think amazing things could come from taking a little bit of time to think about. If I knew I only had a short time left here, what would I want to do? How would I want to be? Who would I want to talk to? Who would I want to see? Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> See, look how the creativity flows. So have an awesome Tuesday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.